Do we say present or present? Record or record? Well, both pronunciations in both cases are indeed correct. A present means a gift, and present is a verb that means to show or make something known. And record is a piece of information, and record is a verb that means to store. So what made these words have two variations like that? Well, that's what we call in English a stress. A stress means that a certain part of the word or a syllable is more dominant, louder, and has more emphasis on it than other parts of the word or other syllables. So with present, the stress is on the first syllable of the word. But with present, the stress is on the second part of the word. And the same goes for the other word. Record, record. Now, we can find the exact same concept in Arabic as well. And we call it nabr. And in today's lesson, we will highlight its use in the Qur'an. When it comes to Qur'an recitation, nabr can be very important, since as we've just seen, nabr or stress can practically change the meaning and the function of the word. So what do we use nabr for when reciting the Qur'an? Well, in the Qur'an, we always use nabr in three situations, and two other situations only in case of stopping. So if you don't stop, these rules will not apply, and you should not be worried about them. But these rules should always be considered when reciting the Qur'an. Let's start with the more common ones, the ones for which we always use nabr. The first case is when waw or ya have shadd. When this happens, they will receive nabr or stress to show that there are two times waw or two times ya. So, why is this necessary then, since a shadd should suffice, right? Well, failing to apply the proper nabr on the waw or ya with the shadd may result in extending the waw or the ya rather than show the duplicated letter. This is actually one of the very common mistakes in Surah Al-Fatiha. And the mistake sounds like this. <laughs> While there are two ya in this ayah, so they should sound like this. So, you are supposed to show that there are two ya. Iyaka, not iyaka. That is one extended ya, that is not two. So, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een. Another example that involves the wow. Notice I said not So is not correct. You have to show the stress on the wow by showing that there are two wows in this case. The second case when we have to apply stress is when performing med lazim. Now, med lazim requires a med letter, wow, alif, or ya, that is followed by a letter that has shadda. So when we get to that letter with shadda, you have to apply stress or nabr on that part to highlight the duplicated letter that would otherwise be overshadowed by the med of alif, waw, or ya. Let's hear this example. <laughs> 
أَخْرِجَهُ قَوْمُهُ So notice I said وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ Not وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ That is not correct. The stress is on the second part of this word in this case on the jeem that has shadda on top. The same thing is repeated in Surah Al-Fatiha in the last ayah when we say غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا The third case when we apply stress is with the words قَالَ إِسْتَبَقَ ذَاقَ These three words end with an alif. We call this alif the alif of the two. Or in Arabic, alif al ithnain, which indicates that this verb is done by two people. And in certain situations, in case of iltiqa'u sakinain, this alif cannot be pronounced. I elaborated much more on this topic in this lesson, so check it out right now if you want to understand this point even better. So, in case of iltiqa'u sakinain, when you drop the alif that comes at the end of the word, like now, with the alif at the end of this verb dropped, it will sound more like قَالَ And in order to get over this problem, we have to apply a stress on the last part of the word so that it sounds different from the singular form of the same verb. So we say وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Not وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ So the difference is between وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ against وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ The first one gives an indication that there used to be the alif of the two so that I know that this verb indicates that it was done by two people. Another example. وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ Now, if I don't apply stress on the last part of the word, it would sound more like this was done by one person, like this. وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ And here you have to remember, and I have to give a reminder, that the alif is not pronounced. The alif is dropped because of iltiqa'u sakinain. So under no circumstances you can say وَاسْتَبَقَ bab. That is absolutely not correct and you should not read like that. One more example. فَلَمَّا ذَاقَ الشَّجَرَةَ بَدَتْ لَهُمَا سَوْآتُهُمَا so we say the qashjara instead of the qashjara because the qashjara would be singular. So these were the three cases when you always apply a stress or nabr. The other two cases happen only when you stop at a word. And the first case of which is when you stop at a hamza that comes after a med. The stress in this case functions as a way to show that there is a hamza at the end of the word. Otherwise, the hamza will kind of disappear and becomes unaudible, since hamza is essentially stopping the airflow, like in this example. <laughs> if I don't apply stress, it is going to sound like this. أو كصيب من السماء. And here you have to be careful not to overdo it or exaggerate the stress at the end of the word because it might give the impression that there is a ha coming after the hamza when you do it too much, like this. أو كصيب من السماء. Moving on to the second case, which happens when you stop at a word that ends with a shadda. This applies only if the letter with shadda at the end of the word is not noon, meme, 
or any of the Qutb Jad letters, since these have their own cases, their own rules. And I talked extensively about these two cases in this lesson. So check it out if you haven't done that already. So, if a word ended with a shadda, you will apply a stress or nabr at the end of the word to show that this letter has shadda. Let's hear the following examples when we recite properly with nabr and then what it would sound like if we skip the nabr. So we say, فَإِن لَمْ يُصِبَهَا وَابِلٌ فَطَلْ If I don't apply the stress, it's going to sound like this. فَإِن لَمْ يُصِبَهَا وَابِلٌ فَطَلْ Now, it is not فَطَلْ, it is فَطَلْ. The second part of the word is stressed, has number. One more example. فَلَمَّا رَآهَا تَهْتَزْ So we say تَهْتَزْ Not فَلَمَّا رَآهَا تَهْتَزْ That is not correct. The stress is on the last part of the word. One last example. يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَئِذٍ أَيْنَ الْمَفَرُّ كَلَّا لَا وَزَرُّ إِلَى رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمُسْتَقَرُّ So we say المفر, not المفر. And we don't say وزر. Because there is no shadda at the end of the word. We say, kalla la wazar. Not wazar. That is not what the word is. But at the end of the following ayah, we say, al mustaqar. Not al mustaqar. So we don't say, ila rabbika yawma idhin al mustaqar. That is not correct. It has to show that there is shadda at the end of the word and we say al-mustaqar. Finally, if you still unable to hear the difference with and without the stress or nabr, or you're still unable to produce it properly, don't worry. Nabr is a concept that is meant to perfect your recitation and make it as beautiful as possible. That's why it belongs to the advanced skills. So take your time with learning the basic Tajweed rules and you will get this skill in time, insha'Allah. So in a nutshell, stress or nabr means you will say a part of the word louder, clearer, with more emphasis on it so that the word is properly pronounced. You always apply nabr on the part of the word that has ya or wa with shadda or when performing mad lazim on the letter with shadda and on the last part of the word qala istabaqa and dhaqa in case of iltiqa sakinain and you apply it only when stopping at the word that ends with hamza after a mad and with words ending with shadda thanks for watching if you want to start your journey to learn the tajweed of the quran you can click on this link. And if you want to understand the Quran in Arabic, then you should click on that link. And finally, I hope you've learned something new today, and I will see you next time.